Hi everyone, I'm Miss Hannah, an Alliance Theater teaching artist, and I'm here today to share with you a few theater games you can play in the comfort of your own home. Now, I know you might be thinking, oh boy, I don't know if I can do that, Miss Hannah, but I assure you that these games are fun, easy to play, and can be done anywhere. During this time of us all spending a little bit more time at home and a little bit more time on our technology, these games are a great way for your children to get a brain break, for you to get a brain break, and for you all to spend more time together as a family. The more players, the merrier. The first game we're going to cover today is What Are You Doing? I use this game a lot in my own classes because it covers so many different aspects of our creative brains. Critical thinking, pantomime, movement in our bodies, imagination, so many things. I have three rules for this game I like to introduce. Number one, there are no right or wrong answers. If someone tells you to ride a bicycle, and the way you ride a bicycle is different than how your next door neighbor rides a bicycle, both answers are correct. You can ride a bicycle however you want. Number two, go with it, say yes. If you get a weird what are you doing answer, like my personal favorite, swimming in a pool full of jello, you don't want to just say no. You want to be brave, say yes, and show us what you think swimming in a pool full of jello looks like. And number three, make specific, strong choices. Be really detailed with your pantomime. If your next door neighbor tells you to make a peanut butter sandwich, let's see you get the bread down. Get the peanut butter down. Unscrew the lid open the bag of bread, and from there on out. Be really specific with your choices. This game is usually played in a circle, going around the circle one at a time. The teacher, or whoever the leader is, will choose a thing that they can begin doing, a pantomime, such as brushing your hair. It can be anything. It can be simple, it can be real, it can be something made up, but we'll just start with brushing my hair. So you want to start this action and do it for a good chunk of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. And then the next person beside you, to your right, to your left, whichever direction you want to go, will say to you, what are you doing? The person who is brushing their hair will respond with something completely different. For example, I'm riding a motorcycle. The person who is brushing their hair will stop their action. And the person whose turn is next will begin riding a motorcycle. Grabbing the handlebars, vroom, vroom. You can play with sound effects or silently, and then you'll continue going around the circle in that way. And then it'll look a little something like this. Hey, Miss Hannah, what are you doing? I'm riding a motorcycle. <laughs> what are you doing? I am jumping rope. You can keep this game going for as long as you want. As I said earlier, the more players, the merrier. So get the whole family involved. In my experience, a teacher, or in this case, a parent, who plays the game alongside their student or child only further encourages the child to have more fun. Try this out for yourselves and get creative. How did it go for what are you doing? Fun, right? Up next, we'll be playing a game called This Is Not A dot dot dot. This game can go for on for a long time at home because our houses are full of objects. The person who starts the game will take an object such as a pen and they will say, this is not a pen, this is a, and they will insert another object into the sentence that a pen could be, such as a magic wand or a broomstick. The idea is to create as many objects as this pen could be in one round. One person will give an example and then we'll pass it to the next person for their turn. Let's see how many different and creative ways we can turn a pen into another object. Let's play a few rounds now. This is not a pen. This is a mustache. This is not a pen. This is a bug antenna. This is not a pen, this is a shovel. Once you feel you've exhausted the pen, feel free to try out another object. Let's try a, a bowl. How many other objects can we make with a bowl? Let's try it out. This is 
is not a bowl. This is a hat. This is not a bowl. This is a piece of armor. This is not a bowl. This is a drum. How did that go for everyone? Great. This is a great game to get your children and you thinking outside of the box. To add another fun element to this game, perhaps you could have a scavenger hunt together to collect objects that you will use in the game. See how many different kinds of objects you can try out. For our final game, we will play The Children Are Sleeping. This game is great for movement and for listening skills. You'll start the game beginning saying, The children are sleeping as your students find a comfortable, sleepy position on the floor. I like to insert some heavy snoring sounds here to get them giggling and comfortable while they get into their comfortable positions. And then you'll say, but when they wake up, they become, and you'll insert something for them to become upon waking. It can be anything you want, but I like to do a good mixture of animals or inanimate objects varying in size and speed. So as we begin, you might say a bulldozer, then a bubble, then a tiny kitten. Make yourself a list of things in advance if you think that would be helpful for you. This is true for all games, but especially this one. You playing alongside of the students up and down, snoring, being silly, it's only going to encourage them to have more fun, and you will definitely have more fun too. Let's try a few rounds now. The children are sleeping. But when they wake up, they become a spider. When they wake up, they become a train. Chugga 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 The children are sleeping. But when they wake up, they become a sloth. endless. You can also connect this game to other content areas. You could have your child become a character from a book they're reading. You could have your child act out a moment from history, such as signing the Declaration of Independence. Or you could have your child become a plant or an animal from a specific ecosystem. So there's a few theater games to get both you and your child flowing with energy, imagination, and a little bit of exercise. I hope these games bring joy to your time at home with your children. Happy playing!